Here I am at the piano with my music up on the rack. And what I want to do today is talk about two things, about the piece that I'm going to play, but also about the technique of when you're playing with music, how not to have your head go down and then go back up and go back down to check on your hands and then go back and usually lose your place. So you want to kind of discipline yourself and practice how not to do that. Depends on the piece you're playing, of course. If you're playing list or you have big jumps, you have to have a way of keeping contact with the music even though your eyeballs, not your head, are shifting around. So it's eyeball shifts that I'm talking about today. So when I play this courant, which is the lively movement, the second movement of BWV 815 in E flat of the French Suite, I'm going to keep my eyes on the music but my eyeballs occasionally, you won't be able to see my eyeballs, but they occasionally veer down and back up, but never my head goes down. Now this piece is interesting because it has relentless triplets, which is characteristic of a Quran, in this case the triple meter. Um, and in the left hand it has relentless da 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 So it's not two against three, really, but it's a two distinct rhythms. So the left hand pretty much, at least the first half, is always doing the dotted eight sixteenth. Uh, at some junctures, the second part, you have triplets in both hands, but then it goes back to the dotted eight sixteenth in the left hand. I don't believe it ever goes in the right hand. Uh, the right hand sometimes has a pair of sixteenths attached to a triplet, but the relentless dotted eight sixteenths are in the left hand. Now this piece could sound very um, relentlessly uninteresting unless within this rhythmic duality that you pay attention to the harmonic flow within the piece. That number one, you pay attention to sequences getting higher and intensifying, or pulling back and retracting. That you have dynamic shifts because of that, crescendos and decrescendos. That you're aware of cadences, even though the music never comes to a complete stop. Although in each half you have a rest, a real resting point even within the first page before the ultimate binary resting point you have little pullbacks to dominant tonic or dominant six whatever happens so you have to be sensitive to that two points one is i'm going to look at the music only and my eyeballs may go shifting around but you won't know it but you'll never see my head doing this so that's one of the things i'm going to point out today so in this first playing, I'm going to play it fairly much slower than it should be to show you how I'm going in and out, going up and forward, pulling back, coming down. Start out in the E flat key, which this is written. It starts a scale from the fifth degree of the scale. He simply does that, and then he pulls the scale down eventually. Just taking little pieces of it to show you. So that when the scale goes up, I'm going to kind of push it forward in dynamic. And when it comes down, I'm going to lift the arm weight a little off it. If I have sequences, I'm going to, if I start with one sequence like he has here, right here. Step down. So you can see one was deeper and one I pulled back. So you'll hear me doing that. tricky and I have to show you where it is. Where This is where there's a jump and you don't have to look down but you have to have good fingering where he does this. I bring my five over. So be careful there. Not to smack that. Like a little quick 
quicker because at first I did a finger switch and I figured the finger switch may work when you're playing slow like this. So you get the legato, you feel that distance of the fourth and do that. But when you go fast, you can't do that. There's no time for finger switches like that. So you have to get the sense of the muscle memory doing that. And not smacking it, but dipping it. Because it's dominant to tonic. And that's where the first time I played it, it poked down. I went, oh no, didn't, didn't want to do that. So I can practice that a number of times. That's a muscle memory thing there. I could have my eyeball going down there. There. My eyeball didn't want to go over there. Not my head, not my going down or up, but eyeballs went that way. But if you did it slow, you could get away with this. See? Then you feel that because you just did a finger switch and you had the legato from five to three. When I was doing it faster in my own practicing, that that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to do that leap there. And that could create a kind of cut in the phrase. So you really have to think of the right hand going over with the trill. Sliding in. And then doing that. So I kind of disguise that. That's what I want. This is a little tricks of the trade. The next section goes into the dominant key which is B flat major and no sooner that he's in B flat major that he takes away the B flat and pulls us toward C minor again but there's a longer section in C minor and then he goes from C minor into F minor now F minor it looks like it's lots of F minor and then eventually brings us a little peak to A flat it's relative major but ultimately back to E flat. So he's covered a lot of ground in terms of keys in the second half, which is usually what happens in the binary movements as you have more key changes, modulations. I'm going to go slowly. Now here again you have ta-da, ta-da. Now, a lot of pianists do things like that with Bach, but you can't do that because it's a short note eighth to a tied quarter to an eighth. 